Make a joyful noise now. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. I'm telling you, man. I am just so happy to be here. I want to start by thanking, let me add adjectives, the impeccable, delectable Dr. Flo for this um, great opportunity to be here. And his beautiful wife for your hospitality, your kindness. Uh, this has become like family. It's not, not like it's family now. We're family and just looking forward every year to be here is something that we enjoy and we love you. We don't, there's no, um, like when my wife said yesterday, the Archbishop said, greet my son. And you have become a part of our family and we're just glad to have you in our corner. Let's appreciate our dear pastor and his beautiful wife. And to all the men of God, I honor all of you, celebrate all of you. But what do I say to my dear Apostle Phil and his beautiful wife, Pastor Shex? Let's celebrate Pastor Phil again. Were you not blessed by that preaching? I was blessed and I was proud. Blessed and proud. Proud, blessed. Proud, blessed, proud. Yeah, you know, your, your children should do better than you. And as I was teaching, I said, see, eh? See, Phil, you know. And I told her, I said, Nigeria will continue. <laughs> but wait, wait, were you blessed by his ministry? Let's appreciate the grace of God. And what do I say to my beautiful wife? <laughs> 15 years and more years to come. I truly appreciate you. I honor you. Sometimes I wonder how they marry myself. Because I'm not too shy at all. She's very cool, too shy. My, my wife, when, when she gets upset, you know, she's, she, she's an American, not, not a form for her, she's real American. Uh, she lived there for, for a long time, for a long time. I brought her home, I. She know grill, but I'm carrying come. And so when she gets upset, when she really gets upset, she gets into full American, my God. <laughs> but I thank you for marrying me, thank you for bringing out the best in me. Thank you for your love, your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody say amen. amen. Acts chapter 15. <laughs> so, I tell my pastors that I, my pastors and people that are close to me, I like to look beyond the front seat when I'm preaching. Because the front seats are filled with people who already know what you're going to say. <laughs> they can even complete the sermon for you. <laughs> but I look into the middle, <laughs> into the back side. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so, that, so I'm going to take my time to so that we all arrive together. So we all get there together. And sometimes, because of where I pastor, I pastor in Benin, and a pigeon will speak for there sometimes. No, Mr. Novi speak, you both. I have to bring in pigeon English into the sermon. So in case I bring it in tonight, just collect them like that. Is that okay? Because... <laughs> yeah, I was even preaching in Atlanta. I forgot I was in Atlanta, ATL. And I brought it in. I said, oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. So Acts 15, let's go straight to the word. I honor all the men of God again. Uh, Reverend Kachian, Reverend Uche, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Pastor, let's thank you. Acts 15, and certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren... Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Ah, Apostle Ayo, I greet you. Apostle Bishop, I greet you. Hear the emphasis. Except you are circumcised, 
after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. I mean, that's emphatic. The Bible says, therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had, had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. Sometimes people say there's no quarrel. There's quarrel. People say, no, the body of Christ. No, no, there's quarrel. Quarrel day. See, there are things that you cannot touch. We can argue about covering of hair. We can argue about wearing trousers. We can argue about makeup. We can argue about tithe. But when it comes to salvation, don't, don't go there. Don't touch it. Quarter day. Paul, look at Paul. Paul quarreled. Look at it. He quarreled. So being passed, being sent on your way to the, by the church, the pastor for Indonesia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and elders and they reported all things that God had done with them. But look at verse 5, very important. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed, underline that, rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Pastor Phil, they believed. But they still stood their ground on the fact that you must be circumcised and you must keep the law. So the question is, what did you believe? And that's what I want to try to bring tonight. So we can distill what we really believe. So that we all can be on the same page. So we don't just shout and leave here. Hey, what do you believe? Somebody say amen. amen. So the Bible says, now the apostles and elders came together to consider the matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles shall hear the word of the gospel and believe. Not behave, believe. So God who knows the heart acknowledged them, watch this now, by giving them the Holy Spirit just as, someone said just as. So remember, the Holy Spirit came down twice. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 3, I think. The of Pentecost, is it 2 or 3? 2. While the, the Holy Ghost came, fame and fell on them. But also in Acts chapter 10, while Peter went to the house of Cornelius, preaching to the Gentiles. While Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell. Between Acts 2 and, and uh, 10, there was Acts 8, Samaria. Where Peter and John went to Samaria, laid hands on the Samaritans, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, who are Samaritans? Samaritans are a mixture between Jews and Gentiles. So when they laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. But for the Gentiles, God didn't allow the Jews lay hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. So that they will not say that the Jews gave them the Holy Ghost. So God ended the superiority and inferiority that the same way the Holy Ghost fell on the Jews, he fell on the Gentiles. So hands were not laid. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. He says, listen, verse 9, and made no distinction. You see that? Between us and and then, purifying, purifying, purifying their hearts by what? Not by works. Not by fasting. Hearts purified by what? Faith. Hold on. Now, 
Therefore, why do you test God? By putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace, we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. What do you believe? Now, the Bible says these Jews believed, yet they still demanded that before you can be saved, you must be circumcised. You must keep the law. What did you believe? What have you believed? Now, let's see an example of that. Um, there's, a, there's, there's another guy who believed. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Let's see something about that. Acts chapter 8 from verse 13. Philip went to Samaria, preached the gospel. And there was a man called Simon the sorcerer. This, then Simon himself also what? So we know the story, Simon the sorcerer. Simon also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, saying the miracles and signs that were done. Jump to verse 18. <laughs> and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered money. But Simon believed. Next verse. <laughs> saying, give me this power also. I'm sure it was active for Abido Shaker. <laughs> Abido Shaker. <laughs> That's what he was asking for. <laughs> Give me this power also that anyone whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now hear what Peter responded. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift The gift of God could be purchased with money. Listen to me. Jesus plus nothing means that our faith in Christ is sufficient. That what Jesus did on the cross is sufficient for God and sufficient for us. God needs no other sacrifice. And there's nothing we have to add to what Jesus has done. Archbishop Benson in Ahosa 201. 101 is um, if God says yes, if, if your faith says yes, well, um, God do not say no. That's 101. Huh? 201 is, that's how I formed it. <laughs> you cannot improve on redemption. You can't add to what Jesus has done. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So when we say Jesus plus nothing, we're saying nothing can be added to the sufficiency of Christ's work. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So notice something. The people in Acts 15, they believed, but did not believe in the sufficiency of Christ's work for salvation. And that looks like many people today. They believe in Jesus. They know the language. They know how to sing and dance the dance. But what do you really believe? Now I'm coming. I was going to tell you what salvation means. So Simon also believed. But he didn't believe in the sufficiency of what Jesus did. And was offering money. To buy the gift of God. Today they call it seed. Dangerous seed. I'm not against giving. We give. But listen carefully. We don't transact with our giving. You cannot buy the gift of God. Salvation is a gift from God. They said, except you, except you are circumcised and keep the law, you cannot be saved. Now, we will soon get to salvation. I'm going somewhere, but let's, let's look at those who claim they believed. So how can Simon believe, yet he's exchanging money for the gift of God? 
Theologians have given it a name today. They call it simony. Simony. When people want to exchange anything, anything for the gift of God. Now I can speak freely in the logic church. And I believe I'm speaking to the body of Christ. And I come from a serious Pentecostal heritage. And I speak with all boldness from that heritage. Because whoever you are, somehow, somehow, you came from this heritage. So listen carefully. So sometimes it's not money they are demanding. Sometimes they want you to use your fasting to transact with God. Some of you did 100 days last year. 100 days this year. And you're not fasting for the expansion of God's kingdom. You're fasting for things that are gifts. Hold on. Listen, 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 listen. I want to, I want to push one table, make it fall now. Listen, listen, listen. Pastor Flo, who Jesus say make it fast? Now who get problem? I be who want help? Who get problem? When they came to Jesus that they couldn't cast out the devil. Who Jesus tell said this kind went not out. By prayer and fasting. Now the man will get problem. I be the people will want help who get problem. So January is coming again. When the man tells you to do 100 days. Say no pastor. Now you supposed to help us do am to help us. Not send us now hold up. Not send us your work. They will constantly give you offering for the work. Wait. No, 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 no. You do the work, then you go help us. I, I know what they will say. I know what they will say. Lazy, they're bringing up lazy Christians. Eh, we, yes, my yoke is easy. My body is light. We like it like that. We rest. We rest. He believed. What do you believe? And you know, you know, it is pressure. Look at me. It is pressure that will make us know what you really believe. Oh. All of us they shout. All of us they shout here. When when they can, when you see pressure and they tell you to part with something for that thing to happen. You will think twice. Come and say, my faith in Christ is sufficient for God and for me. Now, listen. What is faith in Christ? What is faith? First of all, it is faith in Christ. It is not the knowledge of the existence of God. No, that don't, that's not faith. Though, because devils have that. Bible says the devils believe in God and they tremble. When we say faith, we're talking about total reclining and abandonment on the sufficiency of what Christ has done. Let me, let me help you understand it. It is like, say, exam day tomorrow. You they both say you go pass. They come and you say, how you tell sure so you go pass? You say, my friend will go sit down near me, he read. I told you I'm not preaching for those in front, right? I'm talking to my people. I said, 
So, oh, you go pass. How you go to pass? My friend, read now. What if your friend not come to school? That means you have no other plan but that friend. That is faith in Christ. That I have no other plan but Christ. If he fails, then I'm finished. Jesus plus nothing. Simon, Simon offered money. Peter said, your money perish with you. You want to buy the gift of God? You want to buy the gift of God? Romans 8.32, God who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely? Freely? Listen to me. It didn't say, hear me, hear me. It didn't say, if God gave you Jesus, what can he not give you? That's not what he said. What he said is, when God gave you Jesus, along with Jesus, Ibo Masana follow come. Let's see another example of who believed. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24. <laughs> Acts 18 verse 24. Let's see another example of a guy who believed. And let's see what, what did he really believe. Now, I would have loved to greet Acts 19 so you can see the damage he was already causing because of what he believed. Because if you go to Acts 19, Paul went to Ephesus. Actually, at this point, Paul and Apollos swapped places. Paul went to, came to um, Ephesus. Apollos now went to Corinth. So in Acts 19... Paul, Paul got to Ephesus and saw disciples. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Because like we said yesterday, he's the seal. Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13, show me. Having believed, show me Ephesians 1.13. In whom also you trusted. After you had the word of the truth, the gospel of salvation, you know, you know, having believed, you were sealed. So he was asking them, show, do you have proof of identification? How we check that you are saved, that your salvation is genuine, is that you must have the Holy Ghost. So Paul asked, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He was checking if what they really believed is correct. And they said, who is Holy Ghost? Then Paul knew there was a problem. He now asked, then unto what baptism were you baptized? And then they said, unto John's baptism. And then Paul now told them the purpose of John's baptism, which was to reveal Christ... And he preached Christ to them and laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, question, who preached John's baptism to them? Acts 18 verse 24. Now, let's begin the story. Watch this. Now, a certain Jew named Apollos, born where? Now, Alexandria is like the, is like the Harvard of today. City boy. Yeah. The elitist people. Education. Elocution. Huh? An eloquent man. Mighty. The guy no Bible. Wait up. Came to Ephesus. Next verse. This man had been instructed in the will of the Lord. And been fervent in spirit spoke and taught, watch it, accurately the things of the Lord. <laughs> Though he only knew 
Just hold on. I, I will show you what, what that means. Hold on. Next verse. Next verse. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Next verse. So when he's at across to Achaia, Achaia now is Corinth. So when you see Achaia, it's Corinth. So now this, when he's when at to go towards Achaia, the brethren wrote and exhorted the disciples to receive him. When he arrived at Achaia, that's Corinth, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. 28. For he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is who? This is what he learned after he met Aquila and Priscilla. Now watch this, watch this. See. Go back to verse 27. 27. Uh -huh. Now, when they got to Corinth, is when we read 1 Corinthians 3, that one was happening in 1 Corinthians 1 to 3. When Apollos landed, because of his elocution, his, his English, I'm sorry, not being easy to speak that time. <laughs> his, his style, the church abandoned Paul. Paul could not speak. When Paul said, I didn't come with excellence, excellence of speech, not true. Paul didn't have elocution. You know, the feel they preach like that. Paul, Paul is not his Christian name. Saul is his name. Paul means small. Smallly. So, a small man who could not talk well. Galatians 4 tells us, I depend on. Galatians 4. When I came to you, Galatians. You could have given me your eyes. He said, see my letters. They, they are big, for I wrote them by myself. So, I depend on. He's short. He knows a bit talk. Compared to Apollos, who schooled in Alexandria. Eloquent. Mighty in scriptures. City boy. As Apollos showed the church, they said, now pastor, come. That's why Paul began to say, you have many fathers and many teachers, but one father. All that, I was just reacting to Apollos. Apollos don't carry church for a hand. Let's go back. Watch this. So you see, Apollos was that eloquent and intelligent, but he was not teaching correctly. Don't be fooled by people's eloquence. Don't be fooled by their garb, by the number of scriptures they quote. Don't be fooled by the fact that they will call Jesus when they are preaching. I will show, show you shortly which Jesus. Apollos had all those things. But an elderly couple saw him in the crowd. And they called him and showed him the way. What did they know? John's baptism. Now let us define John's baptism. What it be John's baptism? Luke chapter 3. What is John's baptism? Luke chapter 3. You soon see it. And you see that many people believe this. But yet they claim they have believed. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being the tetrarch of the Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Eturia, and the region of Tetraconitis, and Lysianus, tetrarch of... Wait, next verse. <laughs> While Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Next verse. And they went all... And they went out of the region around about, preaching a baptism of repentance for in exchange for the remission of sins. So John was preaching, unless you change, God cannot forgive you. And pastor, bless the people who still believe that today. They don't know that it is Jesus that changes us. You see, the New Testament, under the law, 
you have to turn by yourself if my people are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn but under grace Acts 3 25 and 26 it is Jesus who turns us away from our iniquities are you hearing what I'm saying let's, be, let's keep building the case oh thank you let's, let's go back to Luke 3 go back to Luke 3 when, where, where are we now verse 3 go to verse 3 all right, verse 4 now. Look at verse 4. Let's see it clearly. As it's written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled. Jump to verse 6. And all fresh shall see the salvation of God. Jesus, oh. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized. John. I don't understand. Brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath? I thought you came to save, to show people the way. Now they have come, you're abusing them. Why did you come? Let's continue. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I said to you that God is able to raise up children from Abraham from these stones. He said, go and change Bear fruits, then you come. Even now the axe is led to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and turned to the fire. Next verse. Now the questions begin. And the people ask him, saying, What shall we do? Say, Tell me, Yoruba. How do you say to Yoruba? Kill a fe, eh? Kill a fe shebai. We don't come now. What you say, we say if you come, we will be saved. Now we have to say where we they go. What do you make we do? Hear what John said. He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. John prescribed behavior for salvation. And there are people today who still believe. That it's your good works that save you. They will say things like, let the church. So we should be doing charity. Not that this gospel you are preaching. Not that this gospel you are preaching. Be doing good. Help the poor. Help the poor. Do the... No. No. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. They said... Who has food, let him do likewise. Uh -uh. Next thing. Then the tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, what shall we do? See, John said. And he said to them, collect no more than that which is appointed for you. John was prescribing behavior. When Jesus met Matthew, the tax collector, you know, you know, you know, I want to encourage pastors here. Read the Gospels again from the Gospel of Luke. Luke, because of his association with Paul, wrote with a grace perspective. <laughs> Matthew calls Matthew Levi a tax collector. Luke calls him a publican. And nobody wants anything to do with a publican. So when you read Matthew's account of how Matthew was called, Matthew is the hero of the story. And Jesus said, follow me. And he got up and followed. But when you read Luke's account, that he was a publican. And nobody wants anything to do with the publican. And Jesus calls a publican. A, the highest call for anybody at that time for, is for a rabbi to ask you to follow him. And now Jesus sees a publican in his publican office. Doing the very wrong thing. He says, follow me. And Matthew in awe and response to the grace of Jesus left all and followed. The hero of the story is not Matthew, but Jesus who calls a publican and says, follow me. When you read, when you read the same story of in, in, of, of, of in Matthew, of how Peter and John and Andrew came to Jesus. 
Matthew says, they were washing their nets and mending their nets. And Jesus says, follow me. And they left all and followed. Heroes of the story. But read Luke's account. They had fished all night and caught nothing. And Jesus said, give me your boat. And they used their boat. And then they said, cast your net on the right side. And they did. And they caught. And Peter said, depart from me. From a sinful man. In spite of Peter's sinfulness, he showed him grace. And Peter left all. And followed. Not because. So he responded to the grace of Jesus. Please follow me tonight. So Matthew. Luke's account tells us. That is some Matthew say, follow me. And Matthew responded and followed. Then Matthew called a party. Matthew will tell you, and there was a party in his house, thinking it was Jesus' house. No, Luke said, when he called Matthew, Matthew was in awe of the grace of Jesus. He called his fellow tax collectors. Come and meet the man who does not turn tax collectors away. Come meet the man who does not discriminate publicans. And they all gathered. But there was a man who wasn't there that day. The chief tax collector. He heard what had happened. And the Bible says in Luke 19, he sought to see who Jesus was. He had heard. He wanted to put a face to the name of the man who, doesn't, who appreciates and embraces publicans. It was a short man. In desperation, he climbed the tree. And Jesus was passing by. And he saw him. You know, we have watched Jesus of Nazareth too much. So we think, say, say, Zacchaeus. No, no. If you say for Bini, for what are you going to do? I take column. He said, my guy. <laughs> show, show, show. Day with me, day with me. That kind of, I said, he was like his friend. Zacchaeus jumped like me. Me. He said, today, today, eh? Now your bunker won't stay. Without preaching sin to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus said, everything I have stolen, I will return it times four. He showed grace to Zacchaeus. But John was prescribing behavior for tax collectors. Jesus is showing grace. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? There are people today who still believe that it's their works that save them. And they go about preaching it even though they call Jesus. You must come to that place where you understand it is Christ and Christ alone. My hope is built. I'm not saying like Philo, but I will try. Nothing else. Then Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust. But holy. Listen, listen, listen. Holy. Holy. Where Jesus come? That's my Jesus in my example. Holy, come. Holy. Start again. My hope is built, hope is built on, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet grace. But what? But Jesus, it's too rush. Jesus, wait. Jesus wait, wait. This Jesus, you not get it. Jesus, not the act for him. Well, you act your film. Stand there, Jesus. Wait. You wait, Jesus. Not the rush me. Let me. <laughs> this guy just spoiled the film. Listen. Holy. Jesus, not the stand where Jesus. So, see holy now. Look at me. Is there anything I'm contributing to my standing? If this man move, what happens to me? This is faith in Christ. 
This is the posture Satan fears. This is how, listen, give me some volume. This is how to resist the devil. For Satan to flee from you. have to give something for God to do something. Do you believe it's your behavior that makes him do something? They have not believed yet. Not only the tax collectors came to him, the soldiers came to him too. Let's keep going. Sit down. I'll soon close. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said to them, This is John speaking now. Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. Behavior for salvation. But the same question was asked by a soldier in Acts chapter 16. Verse 30. Go there. Acts 16 verse 30. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? See the answer. Stop taking quotes from people. Stop taking bribe from people. If you have to give one out, be content with your wages. What does the Bible say? And so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your house. Jesus plus nothing. We must believe. That Jesus is the Christ. Some people think what we say, we believe in Jesus Christ. No, that's not what we believe. We believe that Jesus is the Christ. 1 John 5 verse 1. 1 John 5 verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ. What does it mean for him to be the Christ? Acts 17, let me show you what it means. Acts 17, let me show you. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Next verse. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. What? Explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. Who is the Christ? The one who dies, who is buried, who resurrected for the salvation of man. You must believe Jesus is the Christ, not just a miracle worker. Not just a prophet. We must believe in the sufficiency of his finished work. You told us yesterday, there is the work he did before the cross. And there's the work he did on the cross. What we believe for salvation is not what he did that he was healing the sick and casting out the... That's history. What we believe is the sufficiency of that work. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And is this, it is this understanding that admits you into the church 
See, you can listen. At belonging to a church organization does not mean you are in the church. Having a Christian name does not mean you are in the church. What admits you to the church is your faith in the sufficiency of what Christ has accomplished. So in Matthew 16, Matthew 16 from verse 13, he asks, who do men say that I am? Next verse. And then some, some say, you are John the Baptist. Because he came, because he was doing miracles now. John didn't do miracles, he was doing miracles. So, Bo, maybe you are John the Baptist. Because, because, you, because you are done do, 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 doing miracles. Some say Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And there are people today whose understanding of Jesus is limited to this. So they are comfortable with Jesus the miracle worker. That's all they want to know. But we're saying, the Jesus that saved us, that we must put faith in, is the one who went to the cross, died and rose again. For us. It's the same Jesus. But people stop at that knowledge of, so all they want is just give me miracles. Just give me miracles. But that's not what we preach. We preach the one who died, who was buried, who rose again. That faith in him is sufficient. God help me. Who do you say that I am? Verse 16. And Peter said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. He said, Jesus, I said, blessed are you Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Why? Because like we heard yesterday, what distinguished him as the son of God and the Christ was his resurrection. And he had not yet resurrected. So Peter was speaking by the spirit of something not yet happened. Am I making sense to anybody here? Watch this. And I said to you, you are Peter. It was Pastor Phil who taught us that. That when he first met Peter in John's gospel, he said, you shall be. But now, by revelation of Christ, you are. So every, oh glory to God, every time you know Christ, you, oh glory to God, you come into the fulfillment of every promise, of every prophecy. Oh glory to God. Listen. Listen. And on this rock, what rock? What you have said. That I am the Christ. I will build my church. So here, he takes the posture of a builder. Which Peter explains to us as an epistle. From 1 Peter 2. How he's a living stone. And we also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Am I making sense to you? So he's the chief cornerstone, but we all as stones are being built upon that foundation. Am I making sense to anybody here? Now what gives you right to become a stone? That you must believe. Not about Jesus. Not that he's a good man. Not that he's a prophet. But you must believe he died for your sins. He was buried. He rose. And that is sufficient. That is enough for God and for you. Listen. Remember I told you about Simon and about these other guys and John. Simon exchanging money. John's teaching behavior. But they thought they believed. And if you're in that space, you have not yet believed. You must come to the place where you realize it's not what I give or what I do. It's what he has done. And they come. And they, and they try to make I close this thing for you. I'm supposed to close them. Listen. Go back, go, go, go back to Matthew. Matthew. Next verse. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Watch it. Of heaven. And whatever you want. 
will be what? And whatever you lose on earth. Now, this is not about authority. Because in Matthew, I think it's 28 or so, or 22, where it said that if your brother has a quarrel with you, and you come to him, and he doesn't agree with you, come with another person. He doesn't agree, come with the church. If he doesn't agree, he say whatever you bind on earth. Then they say, treat them, treat, treat them as an unbeliever. Whatever you bind on earth, what's he saying? By, by that posture, you can disallow him. I'm going to make it sense to you. you when, when it becomes excommunicated, you, have, you no longer has a part of the kingdom. You're not following what, what I'm saying. You come with a fellow brother to talk to him, he said no. Somebody else, he said no. Come with the church, he said no. He said, now treat him as an unbeliever. Because he has become one. He's one actually because one who is saved, the proof that you are saved is that you love. So whatever you bind, so it's about letting people in or out. So when he said this to Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on it is bound in heaven. He was simply saying, Peter, this revelation you have given is the key that admits men. That's why it was Peter on the day of Pentecost. By the preaching of the gospel, open the door for the Jews to enter. It was the same Peter in the house of Cornelius by the gospel open the door for the Gentiles to enter. So the gospel of the grace of God is the key of the kingdom. Look at the next verse to make it clear. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Then the command the disciples you should no longer that you should tell no one that Jesus, that it was Jesus, the Christ. Look at the next verse. From that time, he began to show to his disciples that they must go to Jerusalem. I like, I like a version that says, we got to show them plainly that they must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes and be killed and be what? Somebody say your man. Tell three people, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not a preaching competition. Tell two people, praise the Lord. Pastor, feel not the clean sweat. Not the drink water. Yeah. Salah boy. Somebody say Let me close with this. They said, except you are circumcised and keep the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. That word saved, like Pastor Flo has taught us in church, is the word sold, S-O-Z-O. Yeah, sozo, but some people pronounce it sodezo. Right? Then the salvation is soteria. And it's not just to be saved from judgment. It's to be saved from everything. It is all of God's intervention in a man's life. Anything coming from God is considered salvation. Healing is salvation. Provision is salvation. Protection is salvation. So see where it gets tricky. Just as in the law, it's a whole. You can't take one and leave the other. Some people are not comfortable when you tell them, sow a seed for the forgiveness of your sin. They say, for what? But they are comfortable to sow a seed for protection or for healing. When you say, fast to be saved and forgiven of your sin. They say, for what? How will I fast to be forgiven for my sin? But you not say, fast for protection. They are comfortable. Can I tell you something? If you are comfortable with that part, it means that first one is not correct. 
It's not genuine. It comes as a whole. What did you believe? I will soon stop because I have like, this is what I, I did, just did 1A. I have 1B, 1C, 2C, 3B, A tomorrow. We'll continue tomorrow. Turn in tomorrow. Listen, 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 listen. My yoke is easy. My body is light. All this struggle, all this struggle, all this struggle. What did you believe? Let me close like this. Make one story. I will close. I served in Gombe State. I like this story. I went to buy. I served in 1999. So I went to the cook stew. So I went to a market to buy ingredients for stew. So I went to the market. I told the, they called it Kaswa. I said, Malam, give me 10 naira pepper. The Malam gave me 10 naira pepper. Give me 10 naira tomatoes. He gave me 10 naira tomatoes. Give me 10 naira, which is the other one? Onions. <laughs> he gave me 10 naira onions. It was a lot for me. So I took it home. I was happy. I got to my, 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 my compass lodge. I showed my friends. I said, see, this is how some people would be in Chipo. Uh -uh. One of my friends standing there, Lawson, elderly guy. Lawson said, how much you buy them? I said, 30 naira. He said, ah, they cheat you now. <laughs> I said, they cheat me for this one. He says, he asked me the crucial question. He said, how did you buy it? I said, give me, give me. He said, okay. He said, follow me next week. I will show you how. So I followed him. When he got there, he didn't ask the man to give him. Lost, he opened his hand. He faced the man, Pepe. He faced the man, onions. Faced the man, tomato. Everywhere was full. He now used the word duka. I didn't know what it meant. Duka means all. And they began to negotiate and negotiate. They landed on 10 naira. And Lawson brought out 10 naira and paid for all. And Lawson looked at me. He said, you grab. You grab. What does this mean? Jesus paid one price. The price, the price for your forgiveness is the same price for your healing. The same price for your deliverance. Same price for your protection. Same price. And tonight, if you can believe that you are forgiven, then I declare to you, you are healed. You are blessed. You are favored. You are protected. You are preserved. Let me show you only one scripture. Isaiah 33 and 20. To believe I've closed. Take this. My wife says, when he says, stand up, don't believe him. But I'm close. Look upon where? The city of where? Appointed. So stop. Let's not read all. Look upon where? Zion. Look at the next verse. Look at verse 24. Quickly. 24. The 24. 24. Same chapter. The, the last verse there. 24. And the inhabitant of where? Zion shall not say 
why, 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 why? Some, some in King James, some in King James, some in King James, KJV, KJV, original king. Good, good. Shall I say I'm sick? What do you see after sick there? No, no, those two dots. What does that mean in English? Huh? 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 I'm joking, I'm kidding with you. Huh? What is that? What does that mean in English? Huh? You want to explain what you talked before? The reason why they will not say they are sick is because the people that dwell in Zion shall be forgiven. So they are forgiven is the proof that they are healed. I don't need to feel better to know I'm healed. I am forgiven. I am healed. I'm forgiven. I am blessed. I'm forgiven. 